Hello, and welcome to What's Bubbling is in I am Dr. Abstract, and in this bubbling, we're going to take a look at more things that are new in 10.6.0 of Zim. Let's go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com, and we can click on the 10 logo to find out what's new in 10, or indeed click on 10 down here. Here's the new stuff, and we looked at the D-pad in the last bubbling that allowed us to move things around, especially on mobile, by pressing on this little circle. It's cool. And now we're going to take a look at the radial menu, uh, which is a new uh, radial menu. You can press on it and open up the different levels and see what's in there. Oh, flavors, sweet, we say sweet. So a radial menu, how exciting. We've been wanting to do a radial menu for some time. It's one of our favorite things, but it took a while to get there. <laughs> um, you, you must admit, like uh, not many of the frameworks around have a radial menu. I think there's one in Unity. The radial menus are, are fairly common, especially in sci-fi games. So uh, one nice thing about a radial menu is from one place you can get to the other things quite easily. You see how everything is close, whereas if you had a, a big long scroll list you'd be moving down. However, you can only show one hierarchy at a time here. Um, so what we've done, uh, rather, whereas a list, you can expand, open a bunch of hierarchies and see them, or the accordion list. Uh, so the radial hierarchy, you can almost think of it as an accordion list, but a round version of it. Uh, there's some slight differences, and we'll talk about those as we get there. You see what we've done here? The very first one has the, the rollover colors show green, like a green, and then we match with green. This is pink, and we match with pink. Or yellow, I guess, so we match with yellow. Any leaf nodes roll over with white and show red if you've reached a, a, a leaf node. So in two, these are not leaf nodes. They expand, well, this one is a leaf node actually, that's a leaf node, but this one is not a leaf node. It expands again and, and shows these green colors. All of these are leaf nodes. The other one in two, number three here, <laughs> two, or three in two, uh, expands one more time. So we use darker colors to expand out to the, the final leaf nodes. You don't have to do it that way. This was a custom one uh, where we did it. So there's one radial menu, like so. Uh, here's another one that shows that you don't have to go all the way around. You can pick an angle. Uh, this, by the way, is the default data for a radial menu. And you can collapse it all here in the, in the corner. B's got some things. C's, C doesn't have anything in it. So that's if you don't specify any data, there's the lovely, <laughs> lovely data that you get. That's it. These are all leaf nodes. But most likely, uh, you wouldn't be using that data. You would pass in your own. All right, let's take another look at a radial menu, and then we'll go in and take a peek at the code. So if we refresh this page, here what we're doing is uh, an app. Oh, we went in and changed some of the stuff there. Uh, can we view it? I suppose we could still view it, but let me pop on out and make an adjust on the code there. Whoop, whoop. Here's the code. We had added in uh, temporaries. We were testing some things there. It looks like we added in a start angle and a, a gap, and uh, so we'll comment those ones out. Come back to that stuff later. Does that sound good? We refresh here, and in it comes again. Okay, so there we are. We're now going the full 360, where we've got two things, smooth things and sharp things. This is for a template that we're providing CodePen as a um, resources for their CodePen challenge page. We're, we're CodePen challenge uh, sponsoring. Woohoo! Okay, so there's smooth things, shapes, materials, uh, gigolos, gigolos, smooth, ah, yes, smooth. Come here often. And when we finally get to the one, there should be here some sharp things over here where we've got different sounds, snap and clap. So do you see a difference in in this radio menu, yeah, we've applied these things called gradients. So there's our velour, nice. We've applied a gradient across, so that was 
pretty straightforward to do. Um, okay, well, why don't we go in and take a look at the code that made this, shall we? So we were already in there. <laughs> Scroll up to the top. We're in Zim 10.6.0. In a fit mode, and we've uh, applied some color. We sort of specified some of those darker colors as we go through. And here's the data, and we can certainly look through the data. We'll just collapse that for a second, take an overview. That's the data, and then we pass the data into the menu parameter of our radial menu. We're specifying that this is open, has a gradient, and some default background colors and colors. We're then centering that on the stage, moving it a touch, and when we tap it, we're asking, hey, if what we've tapped on, if, if we're on a leaf node that's on the very end, then I want to make a new tip, and we'll put the menu's text in that tip. You could also find out things like the selected index and even the level of the menu, and that way you can you know, know where you're at. Because sometimes the menu text might be similar, actually. It could be the same. It could be, hey, a circle here and a circle over there, and you want to know which which menu that is in. Uh, and you can do that. And then we're animating that. Okay, so this is much like any Zim component, and that's one thing that's really nice about Zim is the components pretty well, as and shapes and other things often work in the same way. We're putting different values in here. Uh, and here is our data. We need to get all that sort of um, the data for the hierarchy in there. And for that, we use a hierarchy, a Zim hierarchy, simple hierarchy with extra, it's called. So the, the data hierarchies in Zim come in two forms. There's the simple hierarchy, and then there's a complex hierarchy. And what happens is when you make a new hierarchy object, you can pass in a simple hierarchy and a Zim hierarchy will make the complex one for you. And the neat thing about the complex one is it can hold more than text. The simple one holds text. The complex one holds IDs. And then inside the, the various lists of the simple one, we, we represent everything by an ID and that frees up the object to be anything. It can be um, a particle emitter or, uh, you, you know, you name it. Did we see the particle emitter in the other one and the icons? Let's, uh, let's, I don't think we did. I think we bypassed that. So we're back on the first example here. And instead of going through the text versions, like these are all basically text, watch this. We hit one, and these are icons that are being stored in there. Uh, and also a particle emitter. Check that out. So we've got the particle emitter flying away uh, because all we had to do is represent these by IDs and then we could pass any object to be in there. Same with the Zim list, the accordion list, or Zim list as well. With the Zim list, we can uh, list objects rather than, well, rather than string objects. Um, but on the accordion, we can also expand that open and show different things like pictures. So the, in the accordion example, we do show a picture in there eventually. You could have an accordion menu that has pictures in it. Uh, here, you've got a radial menu and you can um, add things to it. So that means you can animate that stuff, you can uh, particle emitter, it, etc. Okay, so um, where were we? We were in the code. Right, well, the problem with a complex hierarchy is that it is complex. When you look at it, it's, it's more complex. So what we did for this one specifically, um, as opposed, we're, we're using the simple menu still. We use the simple menu for the Zim list accordion version, but on the accordion version, we styled it differently. On the accordion version, every level had a style. In this case, we need to go beyond that. We, we need to provide every radial ring with a style, and indeed it would be nice to be able to access each thing on the ring. So that's different. Um, rather than sort of like everything at level 3 will, will have these styles, everything at level 4 will have these styles, it's different. You can, you can see that. Let's just pop on into this one, for instance. Here we've got our menu. Right away we're seeing something different. In one level, we've actually got two different styles. The way we do that is with a series. So we're, we apply the styles to this radial, 
right here, but we um, we use a series to apply different styles. So that's not quite what we're talking about. This is what we're talking about. Here we go to, this is level one, this is level zero in the middle, level one. Here we go to level two, it's pink. Here we go to level two and it's blue. So we've got a blue one for level two and we've got a pink one for level two. You couldn't do that in the Zim list uh, accordion. It, it wouldn't work that way. So we had to make an adjustment to how we provided the data. And to do that, we introduced the simple hierarchy with extra. And what that is, is the simple hierarchy, you specify a list and then that frees you up. So normally that list could, could have been just a, uh, like that. But so in other words, for shapes here, we could have had the answer would have been this right here like that uh, without that and do we have a comma over here and a comma a comma here so it could have been like this a list shapes has these ones materials would have only these ones that is the simple version but in doing so there was no way for us to apply styles to these guys so what we did is we said we undid that we added a way as I said I think we made it we added a way that instead of putting the list directly in there, you have an object literal with a list property. And then that frees us up to add any other uh, properties that we want. The properties that we use with the radial interface is a list which is required. If you go with the, if you go with the extra format, you have to have a list. But then these can be anything. The list, uh, the format that we use with the radial interface, radial menu, is styles. So we can pass styles there. That allows us to say these things right here will have these styles. And indeed, uh, if we, if uh, this is the very outer list right here. So if we can we collapse that. Uh, well, not easily. Okay. So here's the outer list. We just uh, have to sort of look way down here. Here are the styles for that outer list. So the styles for the very first ring are here. And how we approach the background color, normally that whole ring would get a single background color. But if you pass in a series, each thing that is made in that ring will follow that series. So if we had more things in there, it would be pink, blue, pink, blue, pink, blue. Or we could go pink, blue, red, etc. if there's four things, uh, gray. There we go. Then each of those would have those colors. So once again, the Zim pick or Zim V format of dynamic parameters is handy. We see it yet again, being able to pass in a series. If we passed in an array there, it would randomly pick from the array. If it, if it were a number based thing, we could pass in a min and a max and it would pick randomly from that range. Or we could pass in a function there. We can do that in this case. When we pass in a function, that allows those to be dynamic, as in if from the outside we made some change, say they get a high score and all of a sudden we want all of our uh, rings here on the radio menu to be gold, we could do that. We could pass in a function here that says, if the score is bigger than 100, then I want return gold, else return whatever, pink and blue. Okay, you could even do that, else return the series pink and blue, and it would continue on uh, with that. Um, Zim V or Zim Pick is recursive. Very cool. Okay, so that allows us to style these things, and it takes a little bit of, you know, takes a little bit of thought to do that. We've we've provided an example here, and I, I you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say it was simple. We had to sit down and probably think about this for a half an hour to an hour to get these colors in there right, so that 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 would expand open nicely. Uh, but so be it. I mean, it, uh, <laughs> there you go. That's that's how it is. That's us. Uh, at least you don't have to build the whole radial menu, <laughs> right? Uh, the radial menu is very tricky. Uh, anytime you're using uh, roundness, you're, you're dealing with sines and cosines and uh, arcs and yay, 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 yay. So there was a lot of things uh, we did there, including allowing this to 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 be smaller. So let's let's go through that since we're happen to be here talking about it. There's a total angle now on this, and we'll view this in the browser. I think it's this one. 
I could maybe turn the animation off. So here's the total angle of 320. If you went 180 or what have you, you know, we cut it in half. Uh, but if you cut it in half, I think we'd have to reduce the fonts, which you can do as well, so that um, both smooth things would be here and sharp things would be there, and they'd both fit into here. Uh, by the way, I think the uh, an easy way to handle that is just make your radial interface, uh, well, that's a little bit different, I suppose, but make it bigger and then shrink it down. I think that um, uh, works. So I, I would work with the size that we give you primarily, and then if you want it to be smaller than this, you're certainly welcome to make it smaller. It will it, it probably go a quarter of the size of this quite easily and you know sit in a corner here or, or whatever, pop up where your mouse is. Anyway, we've changed the angle, but watch, here's a problem. Uh, what happens is, is if you just set the total angle, it will still try and center your first button at the top. And therefore, the next ring gets centered at the top, and so does oval get centered at the top on any of these um, centered on the top. So that's probably not what you want. I don't think it looks a little ragged. <laughs> obviously. So you can provide a start angle. Um, so here's a start angle of zero, for instance. We refresh here and we wait for the animation. So now the start angle of zero is not centered on there because that wouldn't be zero, but all of these now line up, which is obviously better. And now it's a matter of uh, however you want to uh, rotate that start angle. If you don't want it as zero, you can go at minus 90 or you know whatever you, you want to set up there. Very cool, huh? So that's that. Uh, there's also a gap as an angle. Let's uh, comment out these guys and we'll take a look at the gap as an angle here. Refresh. Huh. You know, and now I don't know if you can quite tell, but you'll be able to tell as we continue to build out here. The gap as an angle, uh, it doesn't look very good when you when you have, um, uh, when they're not all lined up. They, it looks a little bit better when, when they line up. But basically what's happening is it starts off, it basically we're saying, that, basically, basically, we're saying the, the gap is whatever, one degree or something, two degrees. And then this is still two degrees here. So it kind of radially expands. Uh, that would be its natural state. That's how we first made it. We were kind of looking at it going, yeah, that's not quite right. I mean, it's okay. So if you want that, go ahead. Uh, that's gap as an angle. But what we did is uh, did some extra work there. I think it was another hour, another two hours, whatever, to try and figure out how the heck to make the gap not an angle. So here now the gap is all the same size. You can probably tell it better on something like uh, this, which was going out where it all stays, or even on this one. Oh, that's the stop two. Those ones are different. Three, does that have? Yeah, anyway, you can tell easier when it all runs along the same line like that. But anyway, I think that this looks tidier, uh, keeping the gap a distance and keeping that solid, which meant that on our arcs, we had to uh, subtract different things on the top and on the bottom to get it. Yeah, so anyway, <laughs> it was tricky. So, so now you don't have to do that. We've done that in Zim for you, so that's good. And I think uh, that that's probably about it for what's a bubbling at Zim in terms of the radial interfaces. Did you like that? We took a look into the code. There might be some more things we missed there, but obviously we'd look at the docs. And radial interfaces is something that we've been planning on for a long time, and it was really nice to finally get to it. I don't know if you've noticed. Here we are kind of late in the bubbling. I don't know if you've noticed, but uh, Zim has been slowing down a little. We got to 10. And I mean, it's been maybe a couple months since we did our last update, perhaps, or, or not update, but bubblings. We've still been maintaining some, uh, some updates in terms of smaller things. But we do bubblings for the 10.6. 0, 10.5.0, etc. And those have just been slowing down a little because there's less things to do. Hey, thank you. I'm sorry, I just got a notification in behind here that my i my iPod device is logged in. Go away. 
I, uh, for Pete's sake, I don't know. That should be popping up now. Anyway, uh, I was um, uh, mentioning here, though, that uh, we've been slowing down a little bit, and their a radial interface is almost the pinnacle of what you can create in terms of components. There are some plans to make things that uh, that where we can wave, we can capture motion. We we had that already back in the Flash days. Uh, in a sense, we're rebuilding from what from what we had in Flash. Um, uh, now we did have also a a GUI, a graphical user interface, or an IDE in Flash. Uh, the plans with Zim are not to make an IDE for it. I think that would be perhaps going the wrong route. That's one of the things... Well, I don't know that Flash got in trouble for that. I mean, it, it, we do have Animate still, and that's very professional, and we've got Adobe Shim, or uh, Zim Shim, sorry, Zim Shim that will link Zim in to Adobe Animate quite well. So we don't really need to make an ID when they've got that. Now there are people obviously that can't afford Adobe or don't want to. And there's the whole issue of Flash in general and Adobe Animate, and, you know, the, the somewhat stigma behind it, uh, which is unfounded really. But anyway, we're not, we're not planning on doing an ID. So uh, as a matter of fact, we don't quite have a plan for Zim 11. There, there's nothing more that we need to do. In other words, Zim has become stable. It, it's it's going to slow down, and that's too bad for you guys. If you're here, you're brand new to Zim, and you're sort of you've missed the five year growth where there was something new almost every week. You know, like a new component, new component, new component. Oh, look at this! Look at this change! Yeah, change. And, and that happens. It happens with things. They become stable, and you just have to watch that. Don't think that we're dead because we're stable. All right, keep on using it. That's a good time to use it when you're stable. I mean, it's nice to get that excitement. It is one of the things that potentially killed Flash as well, is that the updates to Flash were all these like minor things in behind the hoods that nobody really cared about anymore. So the conferences, it's, you go to a conference and, you, and somebody would say, oh, look, we've made the engine do this and do that. And you know, like, I don't care about your engine. <laughs> you know, thanks, you made it a touch faster. Um, so, uh, We'll have to figure out a way maybe to, to keep things new, to keep, like, the bubblings, if they're slowing down. What, what the heck? It's like we've filled our bath, you know? Sorry, the bubbles are here. <laughs> the bubbles in the bath. <laughs> That's the analogy. Um, anyway, who, who knows? There's a, there's always famous last words. Perhaps there's a ton of new things that we'll add, but I don't think so. Um and we also have to mind the thing, you know, the, with, with certain frameworks called bloat. <laughs> I think it's too late for that. When, when we have a, we've got a, a VR class to, to handle VR. We've got the radial menu, uh, which is also a little uncommon. You, know, you might consider it bloat. And we've, we've got a portal class. <laughs> I think there's many, many frameworks out there with a portal class. So, I mean, <laughs> there you go. If you want a portal from here to there, you got it. We built it for you. So uh, uh, that was all a lot, a heck of a lot of fun to build Zim. So once again, sorry to kind of tack this into a, a sort of a, a bubbling. You know, you're catching a view into the inventor, the view into the inventor's mind. Um. So hopefully you'll still enjoy using Zim and it's up to you guys now to build things with it. We'll keep abreast, you know, we'll try and make sure that obviously everything is, is working. This happened with CreateJS as well. It happened quite early with CreateJS, as a matter of fact. They built, they had something in mind. Uh, they they did not have what Zim has done in mind. They, they just wanted to provide the basics of um, of the, the the bomb, the bitmap object model, I, I found recently, by the way, it was quite disappointing that, that uh, HTML already has a word for a bomb or has an acronym for a bomb. I can't even remember what, what theirs is, <laughs> but it's like, they've got a bomb too. Ah, oh, crap, I thought the bomb was uh, unique and original. I know they've got a DOM, but what the heck, why do why they have to have a bomb? And I can't even remember what it stands for. I never heard of it. 
but uh, there there is one in the HTML. But anyway, CreateJS um, created the the hierarchy, the the events uh, that that are there, and obviously the basic classes of containers and bitmaps and shapes and stuff. And then they didn't really expand beyond that. They, like they, they made a few updates and they sort of integrated better into Adobe Animate and mind you they've stayed at basically version 1. It took them quite some time to even get to version 1. Uh, Zim being have, having things added on to that like the various components really drove uh, change and I'm certainly glad or happy that CreateJS didn't go into the components business. I think they made it made a, a button but uh, hopefully they, they feel that they don't need to now that Zim is sitting on top. Uh, they've got other things on their plates as well that they were doing. But the same thing happened with them. They, they stopped growing in a sense. Uh, they fixed themselves and they were whole. And that's not a bad thing. And I always thought that the same with Flash. I said, no, no, Flash is great how it is. You don't need to keep, uh, there, there's nothing more that we need. Um, and, and yet people take that the wrong way. They think that it's not growing, or since it's not growing, it's dead, and that's not exactly the case. You know, we don't chop down trees once it grows. <laughs> hey, we got this tree! Great, it's finished growing. Chop it down. I mean, Christmas trees, maybe, um, but you appreciate that tree for years and years and years and years and years, <laughs> hundreds of years. You might appreciate that tree. So please appreciate Zim and in its uh, approaching completeness. And I suppose that that was the message at the end of this public. If you're still here, come on and talk to us about it. We'd love to hear from you. Zimjs.com slash slack and uh, join us. That's that's one area where we could certainly grow. And that is in our community. So looking forward to that. Ciao.